Hey guys, it's me. It's been a while. Um, it's great to see you guys, and um, I hope you all are doing well. Um, today I'm going to do um, a, a video called Get Real with God. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to pray. Uh, Father, I thank you for this day and I thank you for this time that you've uh, ordained us to be together. Lord Jesus, hide me we are behind the cross and Lord, let Rachel die and you and Jesus live. I pray, Lord God, that what you would have me speak would be of you. It wouldn't be my opinion or my conjecture. It would be your word to your people, Lord God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that whatever you're going, that whatever they're going through, you'll find them, you'll touch them, you'll heal them, you'll, you'll restore them in the name of Jesus. Let your word come forth with power and precision in the name of Jesus. Amen. So guys, I hope you're doing uh, well today. Um, it's almost uh, mid-October I can't believe the year is just flying by anyway as I said um, today my sermon is called get real with God um, the song I'm gonna use for it in true racial fashion is called the real me and it's by Clay Aiken it's a song he put out um, about I think about 10 years ago now um, on his, um, on one of his albums. Um, if you don't know who Clay Aiken is, um, he was the season two winner of American Idol way back in 2003. And this is on his third album, I believe. Um, so give me a chance while I get situated here. Because, as you know, now I have to sing the song. I can't play it for you, which it's kind of a pain because I'm not, a, I'm not the best singer, but you'll get what I mean. Uh, you'll get the lyrics of the song. So just let me get situated here. Here it is. <clears throat> Foolish heart, looks like we're here again. Same old game of plastic smell. Don't let anybody in. Hide in my heartache. Will this grass house break? How much will they take? Before I'm empty, do I let it show? Does anybody know? But you see the real me hiding in my skin, broken from within, reveal me. Back. 
my frailty cause you see the real me painted on life behind life is behind a mask self-inflicted circus clown I'm tired of the song and dance living a charade always on parade what a mess I've made of my existence but you love me even now and I still see somehow that you of shattered dreams they followed me they haunted me but you've taken the broken pieces of my life and helped me to Okay, that's the song, guys. I love that song. I I really do love that song. And just give me a second here and I'm going to put the words word screen down so I can see you guys. Um that song really got me at the heart because it's it's something that we all face and we all go through that, that just um, we all have in such a performance based world we all have um, the propensity to just hide who we really are and and create facades and create um, and create personas of what we think people want us to be and what the Lord is calling for is authenticity he wants to he wants he wants people to now be comfortable with who they are and showing who they really are because um, he sees the real you, the one you try to hide, the one 
that's not perfect and the one that's not nice to see he sees you he sees all your fears he sees all your pain he sees everything and he just wants you to to know that he loves you just the way you are he won't keep you the way you are but he loves you the way you are and if there's any changing that needs to be done he will help you do that if you're submitted to him and i think for a long time in the church we've been so um performance based and we've had all this um performance stuff going on and he's really saying now enough with the performance enough with the mask i want to see who you really are and i th and i think a pl a place of vulnerability is so scary but it's also powerful and there is powerful there is power in showing who you really are um to um to selected people people that know you and people that love you and people that can help you with your struggles um uh, like it's like we we are con we are connected so much today but we we are more disconnected than ever and what what i mean by that is we're connected um, by Facebook, by Twitter, by all that, but it, it almost is um, a fake connectivity. It's not a real connectivity because anybody can put anything, post anything on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, but that doesn't mean that it is the real you. It is the it is the um, person that you think people want you to be and he wants me God wants me to tell you today that who you are exactly who you are is enough you're enough all your flaws all your good part everything he's gonna use it for his glory and then the part he does and the Bible, because the Bible says all things work together for good. So even the parts that we think are flawed, he will use them. But the problem is we're too afraid to be authentic. See, even most church services, uh, they're afraid to be authentic. We're afraid to, um, to talk about um, what we're really going through so we have all the all this schedule whatever your church schedule is we do prayer first and then we do worship and the, the sermon but we need to allow room for people to be authentic and um, and we all we always say I think we always say something very wrong in the church. I've heard people say it uh, where I go to worship and everywhere they say she got those heavy heavy bands and worship the Lord. Um, but what I'm coming to now is God doesn't, want, God doesn't want you when you come together to act like everything's okay just shake it off and worship me. He wants us to bring all the crap to the altar lay it down so that we can be free to worship you see i think that we we have gotten into a state where where we can look all fine and dandy oh how are you oh blessed and highly favored in the lord while well, you just had had a fight with your husband and come into church and you just said i'm gonna kill you if you stay another word or whatever like I think God wants us to drop the mask and drop the facade because he he wants real healing to go to come into place and
the problem is in churches now there there is no real healing not no real healing but very little real emotional physical spiritual healing because it's all performance based and he wants the performance based to stop and he just wants us to come to him and say God this is how screwed up I am this is what I'm dealing with this is what I'm this is what I'm struggling with please help me and you know when we're authentic authentic authenticity is the place where healing can begin um if we put up a facade healing can't begin because we are pretending we are pretending that everything's okay we're pretending that we're not going through um whatever we're going through and and we're just um stuck at, because we we don't think people will like us if we were, were the real thing but i think it's the op opposite i think people like us more when we're authentic or even if they don't that's their problem uh, and i i think so desperately god wants you to know that you are okay the, the way you are um that he wants to because the thing with god it's he's a, he's a gentleman he won't come in unless he's invited but once he's invited he'll take over your whole life and you don't have to be afraid to bring everything to him every proclivity every Intensity, every bad thing, every good thing, and just lay it on his feet and say, God, this is how it is. And he's not afraid of your doubts. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to, um, pretend in front of him. If you don't understand things, say, God, I don't understand this. Please help me or whatever. He just wants authenticity and honesty and what I've learned is if you're authentic and honest he will he will get you to the place of faith that you need to be he will get you to the place where you're where you're speaking truth and it's real because he wants you to speak positive he wants you to speak well he wants you to claim things but he doesn't want you to do it if it's fake and if it's not how you really how you really are right at that moment he doesn't want it he doesn't want any fake um believing things i'm not saying that you should be negative all the time and it doesn't help to speak to speak faith or to speak positive it's a must but at the same time, he wants you to be authentic. You can say, Lord, I know I should feel this way, but I feel this way. Help me get there. And he understands that this life is a process. That you won't get there in a day or a month or maybe a year. But you will get to the place of positivity that he he wants you to be and that you should be if you're authentic but if you pretend oh god i know i'm speaking in faith and deep down you don't feel like that it's not going to um it's not going to bring the results that you want it to bring the lord is so desperately longing for the church to be authentic um, not to be negative, to be authentic, to say, God, I want to be here, I want to be here, but now I'm here. Help me get there. And that's all he wants. He wants a pure heart. He wants a sincere heart more than he wants to perform. And 
the people, if you're performing for people, at the end of the day, what they think of you or how you preach or how you do whatever doesn't really matter. It's what, it, it's what God thinks of you. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't accept feedback because I believe that God puts people in your life to give you constructive feedback. But I'm saying at the end of the day, when it comes to opinions and how you should act and how you should be, you should take your first cues from God and how he wants you to act and how he wants you to be. He wants the real you to shine forth. And when you drop the mask and are real with God, you you will be so surprised what he does in your life. Think with me for a second. Do is it possible that the reason you're not where you want to be in your life and you don't have what you want to have in your life and you don't have peace and you don't have joy, real peace and real joy, um is because you're not living in authenticity. You're living in lies. Like you're you're saying one thing, but you're doing, but you're deep down, you feel another way. And he wants you to totally be authentic because he created you the way you are. He loves you the way you are. And he he's just waiting to meet the real you, and he's waiting for you to meet the real you. A lot of people don't even know themselves, and they're wondering, what's my purpose, what's my purpose, what's my purpose? Well, your first purpose is to get to know the one who created you. Your second purpose is to get to know yourself. And when you get to know the one who created you, he will teach you how to get to know yourself because he knows you he will teach you little ways to get to know yourself um i hope you enjoyed the sermon and i hope um this really teached you how to be authentic and to be real with god and that it's okay to feel like you're like you're a work in progress or like you want to be here but you're here all God wants is authenticity and and once you're authentic he can work with you but he will not cannot work with a mask he said people um, the Bible says God looks at um, man looks at, at the outward appearance but God looks at the heart what is God seeing when he looks at your heart? What is God feeling when he looks at you? Is he feeling glad that you're a praiser and that you're authentic? Or is he feeling that you're inauthentic and a phony? He really wants you, you to get to know you and he really wants you to see what an amazing person you are. Because he made you an amazing person. He's an amazing God. And he wants you to, to understand that you don't have to pretend to be great. He wants you to understand, thank you Holy Spirit, that you already are great. That greatness is in you. He wants you to understand and see that you don't have to pretend and put on a show for people. That you already are great. And Instagram following great doesn't make you great. Um, the number, of, uh, the m number of Facebook friends you have doesn't make you great. The number of whatever social media doesn't make you great. It's who you are inside and who you are with God and who you are with yourself that makes you great. And who you are to people and who you are
to others. I, I mean in personality. I don't mean um, people's opinions. I mean whether you're not, whether you're kind to people, whether you're generous to people. That's what makes you great. Not the number of friends you have or or whatever on social media. And I think it's also important to have authentic friendships too because some of us are lying to our so-called friends we're we're trying to put forth um that we are something that we're not and we're so so busy trying to put up this facade that we either lose who we are or we just hide who we are constantly but that gets so tiring because you kind of have to oh i'm one person at church and one person at the mall or i'm one person here i'm one person here be as close to who you are at all times that's what i'm learning for myself that that it's okay to be who i am it's okay to have my faults it's okay to not be perfect. It's okay to be the real me because he sees me and he loves me just the same. And it's amazing to think about it, that the God of the universe cares and knows about me. And, it, and if we can get the gravity of that, we'd be in a much better place. We'd stop caring about what people thought of us and more about what God thought of us and about what we thought of ourselves. And the great thing about God is we have all these scriptures about what he thinks about us. He says, we're well, the head and not the tail, but only not believe beneath uh, Deuteronomy 28. He says, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, Psalms 139. Uh, he says, we're a royal priesthood. Um, mm -hmm a peculiar people. He said he said all this wonderful thing of things about us and he said we are king kings and priests. Um we sit on the right hand of God and it goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. He says we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Uh, oh my gosh, the the things that God says about us about me, about you, are endless. So if the maker of heaven and earth sees that in us, loves us the way he wants to love us, so what does it matter what those Joe Blow at work or at school think about us? You just have to, you just have to settle in your mind that you're going to believe the report of the Lord, not the report of people. Because the opinions of people change about who you are daily sometimes. Sometimes people think you're great and you, you make some mistakes or have some indiscretions and you're not so great anymore. But God's opinion of, about you is constant. He loves you no matter what you do. He'll correct you because he chases, he chases those he loves. But his correction doesn't mean a lack of love. It means that he loves you more. Because so, what parent doesn't uh, discipline a child that they love? Um, I hope this sermon um, encouraged you. I hope it and inspired you and I hope you t you can take some things home with you when when you're watching this uh, video be blessed and have a great night you guys bye I love you